In this video, we cover all the basics when creating a block from scratch. You can jump to the timestamps as in the description below. And for special features like block sliders and shape dividers, we have dedicated videos. Everything in Brizzy starts with a block and that's where we start. On an empty page, you are greeted with the start building your page. Click on the plus. From the block manager, select create your own and a blank block is added to the page. At its core, the block is empty and you need to fill it with content elements like text, images and buttons to bring in the content onto your page. To do this, go to the sidebar, click add elements and add those you need. For example, click drag drop a text element for a heading onto the block, a line element as a separator and then a button and style them out. And that's as basic as it gets. At this point, you'll agree this block looks pretty bland, even with the content added. We can spice it up with background options. The first background option is a colored background, a solid color background. Go to the block settings and choose colors. Pick a color for the background and even set a different color for the hover state. Note, you can also apply borders here. As well as choose a gradient color for the background. When you need to remove the color background, go to the opacity slider and drag it down to full transparency. This also works for removing the border. The second option is an image background. Click on upload image and load it from the library. Set the focal point of the image with the focus selector. With the image loaded, we can also add an overlay color from the color options and set the transparency. Before we move on to video backgrounds, here is where you can set your blocks background to parallax between fixed or animated. The third option is setting a video for your background. Grab your link from YouTube or Vimeo and add it here. We have options to loop the video and even determine the start time. Set the start time in seconds. The last option is a map background. Type in the address you want displayed and set the zoom level. Again, you can add a color overlay if you need more contrast to let the content stand out against the background. Now that we've looked at the background options for the block, Let's focus on the canvas area next. By default, you notice these dotted lines which indicate the canvas area, the maximum width of the content. To control the width, select the settings by clicking on the cog icon and adjust the slider to a percentage of this boxed width. Select full when you need to have the content stretch all the way from left to right across the viewport. Let's put it back to boxed. The block grows in height, adjusting to the contents inside. The more you add to it, the more it grows.
If you want custom control over height, select settings and choose custom. Set the height to percentage or pixels and align the content vertically with these options to top, middle or bottom. If you add more content that exceeds the custom height setting, the block will expand to accommodate the content. A popular feature in website design is to set the block to full height. This fills the background from top to bottom of the screen across the viewport height. Easily duplicate blocks here. And if you need to delete, click on the trash can. Check out our videos on how to save blocks later for reuse as well as global blocks. When we go into the More Settings option, we have control over the padding and margins of the block. Apart from these sliders for adjusting the padding, you can also change the padding to the top and bottom of the block by simply dragging it on screen. Hover with your cursor near the top until you see the blue bar. Then click and drag and adjust. Same for the bottom. If needed, you can add corners to the block uniformly. Or decouple the sides and round out specific corners. Head over to the sidebar and notice this option, Reorder Blocks. Simply click and drag the blocks around in the preferred order. You can also delete them from here by clicking on the X next to each block. Before we finish up with the block basics, it's crucial that at every step along the web page design process, you go and check the tablet and mobile displays to ensure that what you've created for your desktop display also looks good for these devices. From the sidebar on the left, select Tablet here, which takes us to the tablet responsive design. Controls are available for all the settings you can change here. And you can do so fearlessly. Nothing you change here will affect the desktop or mobile design. And when you're happy with how it looks for tablets, then do the mobile version next. Resi also gives you shortcut keys to cycle between these various displays. Hit Ctrl minus on Windows and Command minus on Mac to move from desktop to tablet to mobile. And then use Ctrl Command plus to cycle from mobile to tablet to desktop. And with that, we've covered the basics of the block. There are a few more features like anchor links and shape dividers, which we cover in separate videos. And let's not forget saving blocks, global blocks, block conditions, and block sliders. These are supercharged block features, and we've got dedicated videos on each.